Now we're going to get down to the nitty gritty of what Indians are all about. I still say we Indian people are believers in the truth. This is the way of life that was given to your people. You born an Indian, you're going to die an Indian. Indianness is a good life. You're facing an Indian this afternoon. Good Saturday afternoon out there, everyone, and welcome to your number one source for Native American television news. It's Native News Today, along with Gerald Wofford. I'm Jason Salzman, as we welcome you to this next 30 minutes of great stories. We're so glad you could be with us once again. Absolutely. Thank you for taking time out of your busy afternoon. We know, as my co-hosts always say, you've got a lot of things to do out there, a lot of great things to do, and you choose to spend some time here with us. We really do appreciate that, or maybe putting it on the DVR. You right? got it. You know, uh, this is what I do. You know, we're always out, out there doing things on Saturdays, especially when it's nice outside like it has been. Hey, no problem DVRing us. You can catch Native News today whenever mm -hmm. you want. So uh, without further ado, we get started with all that we've got going on this week. Big weekend at the Muscogee Creek Nation this, last, uh, this past weekend, Gerald, uh, actually crowned a new set of royalty, mm -hmm. a miss mm -hmm. and junior miss of the Muscogee Creek Nation. A little bit more on that later, and uh, and we're excited about that. You know, those ladies are goodwill ambassadors for the mm -hmm. nation, and uh, they got a big year ahead of them. They really do, and I know we've always emphasized how much they represent the tribe. But, uh, yeah, they are going to be some of the uh, first people that a lot of people uh, see the tribe represented, mm -hmm. shaking the hands, uh, you know, uh, letting them know that uh, they're welcome here at the tribe. and. Uh, we we'll hope that they're good ambassadors. Yeah, they and wh wh what's neat too is that they're in sort of this uh, group now of the other Miss Indian Oklahoma, you know, right. Miss Cherokee Nation, you know. They'll see each other at the powwow circuits and, mm -hmm. and the appearances and things like that. So that's going to be neat for those girls to, uh, to be involved in that. Congratulations to them again. Like I said, don't want to give it all away. We've got a lot more on that later mm -hmm. on in the program. But also uh, some great things going on over the College of Muscogee Nation, a new mm -hmm. grant from... Uh, Behavioral health has allowed them to start doing a, a few art classes over there. Right. There'll be some moccasin making. So, right. and I hear they're going to be doing that at the festival too. I mean, is there anything they're not going to be doing at the festival this year? I mean, it's going to be uh, something for everybody. I know we say that, but it really is. Well, you know, we have to really credit the college here because uh, on a local level, they really do try to be innovative on the artistic side. I know mm -hmm. we've done a lot of stories out right. there before. Other um, artists have come through, either done internships mm -hmm. or some type of a programs out there and just really giving out that uh, artistical uh, endeavors. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it's one of those things where, you know, not only are they teaching and, and keeping that culture alive that way, mm -hmm. but uh, they're doing it with people uh, that they know and, you know, around yeah. the area and some mm -hmm. new that have never been exposed to those type of things. So uh, mm -hmm. it's going to be cool to take a look at that story as well. Also, one of the top tourist attractions in the state of Oklahoma since it was really built and you know came together in the early 70s the Cherokee Heritage Center Gerald I don't know if you knew this but it's it was for a long time and maybe still it, the top tourist attraction on, on Oklahoma tourism website um, and so you go out there and they have all these things and the National Museum's right there mm -hmm. now they have a brand new exhibit the town of Deligua which in the Cherokee language everybody knows uh, or maybe not everybody, but we certainly do. It means Tahlequah. Mm -hmm. um, and I think it's, uh, do you know the actual translation? I think like the place of the shaded tree or trees or something like that or something. Right, the, I, something. The Help Legua, me out. Yeah, yeah. the Legua, we come, coming from that, you could okay. say that it inspired that from the uh, the historical ceremonial town in right. Tennessee. Yeah, and I, you had to throw me a lifeline there, so I appreciate that. But uh, yeah, <laughs> great story there, mm -hmm. and uh, as you mentioned, a uh, tourist attraction, so we'll have that story for you too. It's going to be great, and uh, as certainly, last but not least, as, as we said, um, you know, the pageant, we're going to have a look back at that, first time ever at the River Spirit Event Center. You know, so many things going on uh, this week that we definitely want to get out there, and uh, it's going to be great. So uh, everyone out there, uh, don't forget, as we said, coming up on a big couple of weeks here at the Muscogee Creek Nation, uh, there's going to be some slow pitch going on next week. Uh, there's going to be, uh, you know, the Thursday after that, there's going to be the Stomp Dance exhibit. I know a lot of people are getting ready for that, so don't forget to mark your calendars. A uh, big couple of weeks coming up at the Muscogee Creek Nation, and you can find this guy right here on the Claude Cox Omniplex, I promise you that. I tell you, so it's going to be great. It's festival time. You got it. Well, without further ado, we're going to take our first break. Nobody go anywhere. We've got a great show lined up for you as we go to this first break. You're watching Native News today. Hello, I'm Principal Chief George Tiger of the Muscogee Creek Nation. 
Our state has been devastated by the recent tornadoes. Homes demolished, dreams diminished, and lives forever changed. We at the Muscogee Creek Nation want to take a moment to share our sympathy and console those who are in grief. In times like these, there are no racial or color barriers, only human compassion. Our spirits are hurting, but not broken. God bless America, and God bless Oklahoma. Every seven minutes, someone loses their eyesight. What do people with low vision look like? What do they see? Project Native serves Native Americans by offering hands-on workshops using low vision equipment that help with everyday activities. Please call 918-456-5581 for details about this free program. If you are Native American with low vision problems, let us help. Call 918-456-5581. And welcome back to Native News Today. Jason Salzman, Gerald Walford. Jason, you know, Native American tribes are really making sure that the playing level, if you will, on, on the business scale is there, especially for Native American businesses. That's right, Gerald. And as you both know, uh, these big tribes, Cherokee Nation, Creek Nation, uh, Seminole, Chickasaw, they contract out a lot of work. They, mm -hmm. they rely on companies out there um, to do work for them in, in certain aspects. And, and a lot of people um, that own those companies are Native, and they mm -hmm. are mm -hmm. from those respective tribes. The TARO program, the Tribal Employment Rights Office, is something that's worked great at the Cher at Cherokee Nation. They've really had a lot of success with it. Now the Creek Nation implementing uh, their own TARO, and it's to give preference to the Creek businesses and those owners out there to just sort of do business with them and, and really invigorate that side of it for them in their own personal lives. And we were there as on a historic occasion because we were there for the very first meeting ever for the Muscogee Creek Nation TARO program. Well, this morning our, uh, uh, it's a historic event in the sense of Muscogee Creek Nation, the first time ever uh, that this group called TARO, with the Tribal Employment Rights Office, which is a nationwide organization uh, with several different nations from all over the place that are uh, part of TARO. And uh, since uh, <clears throat> the law was passed, enacted, and the Muscogee Creeks decided to uh, venture into the world of uh, uh, dealing with native-owned businesses and so forth uh, for procurement and employment purposes and so forth. Uh, so this is a new venture for the whole tribe. And as you can see in the background, the certification committee is uh, commencing to, to do the first ever meeting uh, with the Muscogee Creek Nation to Taro. They, uh, they were selected based on their varied backgrounds in the business world uh, as such as their job entails here with Muscogee Creek Nation. And it's very important to have people of such that can review these very pertinent uh, documents uh, that place a company, uh, that actually places a company uh, whether it's Greek or native owned or not with the documentation process. And, and this venture is, we're the 13th tribe in Oklahoma to uh, uh, have Taro, and there were approximately about, I think, 237 nationwide Taro tribes. And one of the things is, is what this does is uh, it gives a preference rating for Creek and Indian owned businesses in uh, areas of procurement and contracting and so forth in which it should be. Most tribes do have that law, but this just makes it pretty well official and uh, the enjoyment of having Creek projects, Creek-owned companies should be, be doing, doing the work or the procurement process or Indian-owned uh, secondary phase of it, uh, the preference rating and stuff. So this is brand new here and uh, we're just, I'm, just, I'm so excited you know, to have this. It's the first time ever. What this does is we will keep a uh, data uh, of all the Creek and native owned businesses that uh, offer service or uh, sell a product in certain areas. So any department, any entity of Creek Nation can simply, at the click of a button, all of a sudden have a list of native owned uh, companies that have what they want and what they're looking for. And they've always been there, but they just really, and you're right, they never have really been identified. So this will be a formal, official identification of such businesses. And our process here is just to make sure that all the documents are there, all the pertinent documents are there to ensure that it is a native owned so we can, so they can enjoy the preference that comes with that. Jason, we know there's great many forms of Native American art. Mm -hmm. We know we talk about, of course, the canvas painting, and uh, shell carving, mm -hmm. but uh, moccasins. Mm -hmm. That's always been a great traditional form of Native American art. And comfortable too. <laughs> You're not sure. gonna find a more pair of comfortable shoes, but 
But the moccasin making is going on here uh, at the Mus at College of the Muscogee Nation as part of a grant that the Behavioral Health Department actually uh, received at the Muscogee Creek Nation. You know, a lot of uh, disparaging statistics out there involving native youth and behavioral health problems and things like that, and suicide rates are high. So there are these initiatives to get students involved in something that they can be passionate about, that takes up their time, that can really throw themselves into artistically. And this is a, is a part of an art series, really, uh, going on at the College of Muscogee Nation. And our very own intern here, uh, Amanda Rutland, visited and was a part of one of these moccasin-making classes. And uh, we really hope you enjoy this story. Today we're having a, uh, uh, a cultural arts class, and this is a uh, moccasin making class. And so this is uh, through the Student Affairs Office, and we're, we're also partnered with the uh, Muscogee Creek Nation Behavioral Health. So they also just come out and uh, just try to uh, support us through uh, programs and you know just, just morale. Today our, our moccasin making class uh, is going on. It's uh, facilitates our, our mission uh, to provide a uh, positive learning environment for students here. It, it, it emphasizes our uh, traditional values and culture. So it, it really means a lot to, uh, to the institution and to the students. We're definitely part of the Muscogee Creek Nation and we feel like we want to uh, provide something to, to the citizens as part of the festival. So we're holding another uh, cultural arts class and we'll be doing uh, tobacco bags and uh, um, medicine wheels. Hi, I'm Thomasine Fife and I'm employed with the Department of Health, Behavior Health. And I've been working at the College of the Muscogee Nation for the past couple of years. We have a suicide prevention grant for Native Americans the ages of 10 to 24. Suicide is a second leading cause of death. So one of the services that I'm able to offer and provide here at the College of Muscogee Nation is counseling services, as well as other life skills and educational opportunities, any workshops or seminars that will ensure that the students are successful in college. So we've had a stress management course, time management, because those all contribute or can stress can contribute to suicide. So we are taking the route of adding uh, prevention education to the students. We come here at the beginning of the semester and kind of introduce ourselves to the students, to the community, and, and ask them if there's anything that they would like to learn about this semester. So one of the things that was prominent was cultural. So Mahaya Harjo and Mahaya Marshall and Monty Randall and I met and we discussed what, what could the students benefit from? So there were several things. You know, we have a language class here. We also have a hymn class. One of the missing things was like a hands-on class. So we talked about having the moccasin making class and it was agreed upon that the kids would benefit from that. So with the grant is money to utilize for education. So we gathered the, gathered the supplies for it and um, Mahaya Marshall and Mahaya Marja, Arja, excuse me, agreed to provide the service. So we're looking at other opportunities that the students would benefit from. Um, it's gone really well. There was over about 20 students in there, and you know this is reconnecting them to their tribe, to the tradition. Um, culture is a large protective factor and we are very happy to provide this and look forward to other courses and other opportunities to collaborate with the college. Well Jason, it's always great when Native American tribes make a great effort to preserve the culture mm -hmm. and tradition through ways of learning the next generation, if you will, about the history of it and we found that a uh, very good example over in Tahlequah. You got it, Gerald. The Cherokee Heritage Center, as we mentioned uh, from the jump, it's just one of those places to where they're doing such a wonderful job of not only, you know, telling people about the Cherokee people and, and their genesis and their history and their story, but actually showing it to them. You know, that's one of the few places on earth that you can almost travel back in time, really, when mm -hmm. you get out there and you see that not only do they have the Cherokee National Museum, but right there, um, they used to have, the, you know, the ancient village and everybody, has, you know, has probably been to that and has their own stories. But, 
you know, look at the new opening of this new exhibit, Deliqua, uh, mm -hmm. which basically takes you back um, to, to an ancient Cherokee town um, that has its roots from the very beginning of their story. So we were very honored, very pleased and glad to be invited up to the opening of Deligua. Hawa is the land I know. Still does. I would do it is to want it, huh? I want it to die. What don't? The God, uh huh, to do the Lord, see you got here. He just tell her, huh? No, no less square. Start the Dizelux Donna, huh? It was a day probably just like this in the spring uh, of 1838, when our people looked up and said, it's gonna be okay. That we've made it through the harsh winter, we've made the trail, and this feels like home. The vision some 50 years ago was to have a facility like this, where the culture, the heritage, the history, of the Cherokee people, their story could be told and archives could be kept. And when they envisioned the village, literally hundreds of thousands of Cherokees and non-Cherokees, many of them students, have been through that village. A hundred years from now, 200 years from now, 300 years from now, I expect this place to still be here. I expect our great, great, great grandchildren to be enjoying this very spot where the female seminary once stood, the first institution of higher learning west of the Mississippi for any woman of any race. The Cherokees have a storied history. And as principal chief of the Cherokee Nation, my oath of office says that I will protect and defend and promote the culture, the heritage, and the history of the Cherokee people. In 66, we did, started construction here. We did the site work and stuff, and then we built the very first, uh, we call it the ancient village in those days. Diligua is a town. Uh, but we had a, in those days when we built that, we really only had some verbal descriptions. And I went to the, uh, Gilcrease had some books, a fellow named Timberlake had written some other early descriptions of Cherokee structures and stuff. And we reconstructed as best we could with the things we could find those days. But since then, we've ran across all kinds of archeological discoveries. And we have some archeologists here with us today that are very in tune with that and they have helped us put together the new Diligua village. The bottom line is, it's about preserving our culture and our heritage and letting everybody know where the Cherokee came from, but with an eye to where we're headed in the future. The opening of Diligua really represents a milestone in, in our development over the past 50 years. So it's the beginning of the next 50 years, and uh, we want this to be just a uh, a real impetus for people to come and visit the Cherokee Heritage Center and to breathe some new life into the Cherokee Heritage Center. We've always had great participation, a great number of visitors from all 50 states and from across the world, so the uh, opening of Diligua is really going to enhance that. Our village is the most accurate representation of what Cherokee life was 300 years ago, um, and that does surprise many people because it's not typical of what they would expect to see. And it, it really educates people in a way that uh, the Hollywood movies don't. So I've been doing living history now for about 18 years, which I would travel around different museums, different universities, and set up living history camps from the 1700s, okay? And a lot of the stuff that I have here right here is my own stuff, stuff that I've created myself. Brain tan, for example, I love brain tan. You know, I learned that from a creek man named Jimmy Sanders, older man. Yep. Uh, I was doing it, but he come up and looked at my stuff one day and he said, if you want to learn how to do this, I'll show you how. And I, you know, naturally, you don't turn, yeah. don't turn it down when you're yeah, going to look exactly. it. Exactly. I said, okay. And I'd seen his stuff. 
He helped me in leaps and bounds. Little subtleties that I was missing. I really, you know, look at this as a uh, a place to either peak the, the, the people's interest to get them to study more or for those that are studying it to have a place to come to actually touch and feel. Well, the month of June, always the Creek Nation Festival and always the festival is kicked off with the Miss Muskogee Creek Nation Scholarship Pageant being held last Saturday, the River Spirit Casino, and the Junior Miss Pageant as well. Yeah, and it's one of those things that everybody looks forward to every year. You know, we pick two ladies that are going to be the standard bearers for the Muskogee Creek right. Nation throughout the entire year. They're going to be going places, they're going to be traveling, you got to teach them the wave, you got to, you know, make mm -hmm. sure that they got all the etiquette down. And they do. These ladies go through a crash course, if you will, mm -hmm. of, of what it means to be Miss Muskogee, Junior Miss Muskogee. Muskogee and what a great night first time ever at the River Spirit Event Center um, and, and all the resources that come with that and a great crowd out to see these ladies and really mm -hmm. you know there's got to be winners okay I understand that there's got to be one girl that's named Miss Muskogee one that's named Junior Miss but all of these ladies are winners because of what they're doing right. culturally so we want to say thank you to them and we sure hope you enjoy taking a look at the 2013 pageant. The beauty of the Muskogee Creek Nation's culture and its people was on full display on June 1st at the River Spirit Event Center, as the 39th Annual Creek Festival was officially kicked off with the 2013 Scholarship Pageant. An event that has become one of the top draws of festival season every year, the pageant enjoyed its first year at the beautiful Event Center and advanced its purpose in providing an opportunity for the youth to reach their educational goals through scholarship. Through the pageant, these young ladies develop their sense of self-confidence, poise, public speaking skills, social skills, and further their cultural knowledge of Muskogee history, customs, and traditions. After a Miss and Junior Miss Muskogee is named, they immediately promote the nation as goodwill ambassadors during their year-long reign through various public appearances and speaking engagements. Your 2013-14 Miss Muskogee Creek Nation is Rachel Sourjohn. She talked about the experience and how much she enjoyed being a part of it. The anticipation was killing me. I won't lie and say that I was extremely surprised that I won. Um, if the, you guys caught the face, I was, my jaw dropped because uh, there were so many wonderful contestants. All the girls were fantastic. Um, I'm definitely happy even if I hadn't won. I was just happy to get the experience and to be able to get to know these girls. And even though we were only with each other for like six hours, uh, I feel like I can already call them my friends. Newly crowned Junior Miss Muskogee, Brianna Hill, talked about having to overcome tough competition and a case of nervous excitement. I don't even know what was going through my mind during the pageant because all I could hear was my eardrums like drumming against my skull. Hill knows the position she's in is that of a role model for younger kids and welcomes the opportunity to visit with them and share the culture. I would like to talk to at, at schools more, you know, to get the Muskogee people out there because a lot of people don't know about us. So I'd like to spread the word about our culture. Both ladies know the immediate busy schedule and the next year that awaits them and they're ready to hit the ground running to represent the Muskogee Creek Nation. I intend to travel a lot. I, attend, I plan to go to a lot of powwows, a lot of festivals to represent the Muskogee Nation. Well, I'm really excited to travel and get to meet different people and represent the tribe at many different places. I hear I already have a very busy schedule and I cannot wait, and especially the Creek Nation Festival is coming up. I can't wait to get all, meet all the beautiful people that are gonna come to Otmogi to experience our culture. At the River Spirit Event Center for the 2013 Scholarship Pageant, Jason Salzman, Native News Today. Well, that brings us to another great end of Native News Today. We're so happy that you joined us this week. And as we mentioned, the Creek Nation Festival was upon us all through the month of June. So many activities are going to be happening right. throughout. We'll be announcing those as they come along. One special one we want to announce to you, Director Bob Hicks. We've had him on the program before. He's done Absolutely. some other uh, artistical uh, yes. activities with the Creek Nation. Well, he has created a play. It's entitled The Dawes Commission. Oh. Now, of course, a lot of us are familiar with that historic time in which Native American tribes, especially here in Indian ter mm -hmm. Territory, getting their allotted land. He takes a look at that from a Muscogee Creek perspective uh, involving uh, a caste that, uh, you know, some of them want to accept their land, some mm -hmm. do not. 
Uh, it's really interesting play, probably for a lot of people out there, it might even be educational, if right. you will. It's free, open to the public, the Mound Auditorium here at the Creek Nation. Uh, the debut is next Friday evening, and uh, that is the 21st. Mm -hmm. And uh, excuse me, that's the 15th. 15th. The next week be the 20th and there 21st. We'll also premiere 7 p.m. at the Mound Auditorium. Free and open, great play. And both weekends, right? You know, so yes, chance weekends. to catch it if you mm -hmm. don't get the first. Uh, he's reputable, done a lot of things, uh, mm -hmm. like you said, in the industry. And uh, um, actually, an award winner at the Art Muskogee Creek Film Festival, That's I believe. Right. Uh -huh. uh, so definitely, if you get a chance, you would go out and uh, check out Mr. Hicks's play. And like you said, friend of the program, always love having him on and uh, talking with him about things. And uh, so uh, that should be really neat. And it's one of the I believe maybe the first time it's happened at the festival. I, I think so. They've never had a play. Right. And uh, so you're going to come in the cool confines of the mound mm -hmm. and, and watch a great play. And like we said, you know, a lot of things at this year's festival uh, that are brand new. You know, you look at a, a live play, mm -hmm. uh, bass fishing tournament. Uh, it's mm -hmm. going to just, you know, I mean, y y there, there literally is uh, so much excitement around here. And the with parade. Just Cause, the parade, Gerald and I. Uh, is that, now, has that been uh, confirmed? Are we? I think as much as it can be. Really? Okay. I mean, I don't know why they would want to get anybody else. Uh, no. You know, no. The Marx Brothers, maybe. I mean, maybe. No. Maybe, but yeah. Uh, yeah, but no, no, they wouldn't no, do that. They no. wouldn't do that. We'll be hosting that yes. parade. We l certainly look forward to it. We hope you're out there. Yeah, and if you like our antics on the show, definitely come to the parade. You know, yeah. we won't. If we, you'll see more. Yeah, well, yeah, it'll oh. be un it'll be totally uncensored. You know, oh. not that we're going to use foul language, but, but no, you know it's what. a family parade. Exactly. You know, and we want to see all the families out there. That's right. We also want to see all the families out, as we said, 21st through 23rd, basically in that weekend there. Uh, all kinds of great things going out. Actually, the 20th is when we get kicked off uh, with the uh, Stomp Dance exhibit. Yeah. Always a Not big, kicked big off the parade. Not kicked off the parade. Uh, that'll be later. The 20th, though, is when everything really gets gets going and uh, the, the Stomp Dance, a lot of people will be out to that. And I think it's billed as the world's biggest Stomp Dance uh, exhibit. Hey. So, yeah, hey, my goodness, why go. would you not want to come out? That's right, that's yeah. right. Now, the parade is Saturday afternoon, Saturday, Saturday morning. Saturday morning, yeah, it's kind of early. You know, they want to get out there and make sure people don't get too hot, you know, which I agree with. That's fine with me because mm -hmm. we're going to be there. But um, it's it's one of those deals where, you know, that kind of gets that Saturday going. Everybody right, gets, you know, leaves the parade, heads straight on over to the uh, uh, Claude Cox Omniplex. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, around that time, noon, T drop the kids off, let them ride some rides at the at the kids' corner there. Um, take take in a little bit of softball, come back, get you something yeah. to eat. It'll be just about time. That sun will be going to bed to, for Motown uh, right oh, there boy. in Alt Mulgee. Mm -hmm. You know, Detroit comes to Alt Mulgee mm -hmm. that night as we have Smokey Robinson, right. Natalie Cole. Um, mm -hmm. I know you're going to have a front row seat. Oh man, you got to be there. I tell you what, the, one of the kings of Motown. The kings of Motown. I mean, there you have it. So well, thank you for joining us here on Native News today. If you can't check us out here, live Meantime, stream. Meantime, you take care. God bless. And we'll see you soon.